Well, hello there, train fans. In this video, I will examine the first three issues of Your Model Railway Village. This 120 issue series of magazines and model parts allows you to build up a complete model railway layout which has a 1960s theme to it. On issue 1, it details that not all items shown are part of the collection. Some items are projects within the magazine. The total cost of 120 issues is $2,386.80, and that's Australian dollars. But this does not include a powered locomotive or transformer to make your railway complete. These are additional costs which are offered as specials within the magazine. So let's explore exactly what you get for your money in issues 1, 2 and 3 compared to items I purchased at my local hobby store. Let's do it. So let's dive into issue 1 and see what you get for your money of interest. It's a very good price. It's $8, forget this 99 blah blah. That's just a con to make it look a bit better. And what have we got here? We've got um, a bit of a magazine. We've got some deals, that probably so. Well, if you subscribe now, you get all this free stuff. What have we got here? I think this is just an um, overview of the collection. And it looks like there is a bit of the track mat, as we'll call it. We'll look at that properly. A bit later on, there is a piece of track here. And there is quite a wondrous carriage. Oh, yeah. Well, this first pamphlet is basically a synopsis of what you're getting in the collection. Remembering it's 120 pieces to this collection and it tells you outlines of what's in the magazine, all about model railways. A bit of train history is also in these as well. It talks about some of the specials that are part of the deal. And on the back here is quite interesting, it's the upcoming issues. I've got issue two, I've got issue three, which will look at this. And issue four, what do you get? You get the magazine and you get a level crossing and a piece of track. All that for, what was it? $20. If I open this up, it expands to quite a wondrous picture of the layout. If you ever finish the collection and do everything the little magazines detail. You know, as a look at this picture here of the layout, it does look impressive. There's lots of little details in there. It certainly looks like a nice train set. I'd love to have that in the home. But remember that not everything you see in the image there is part of the collection. What I do like is I think the track layout is quite interesting and it'd be really easy to expand this out from some of the shunting yards to be a much grander set. But if I show you another picture, I can explain it a little bit easier. Well, here's an overview of the layout. I think it looks quite interesting. There's the main line loop, as I'll call it, running around there. There's some points that then will take you off if you want to a country run in the layout. There's a tunnel built in here and there's some shunting yards dotted around as well. If you wanted to expand this, it'd be very easy. You could actually build another section of loop. You could come around here and join it on there. And then you would have two separate independent loops of track. But overall, I find that quite interesting. As always with these deals, they're trying to make it a, an incentive to come in and be subscribed to this earlier in the piece. There's free stuff to be had. They want a direct debit relationship with you for all this to work properly. Free, 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 free. But I noticed by issue three, the free stuff gets bigger and bigger. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six things for free. But before you race in and sign up to all this, remembering it's 120 issues and it's over $2,300, you need to really do your homework. You need to understand exactly what value you're getting here. You need to go online and see what else is available for around the same price. And you need to have a huge commitment if you're gonna continue on and make this model railway. I certainly know Rome wasn't built in a day, and the same thing goes for this quite impressive model railway. The magazine which comes with this collection is fairly impressive. The first half, from the looks of it, talks about building a model railway, explains some of the aspects to the track and things. Let's not talk about HOOA, let's keep that off the radar on this one. Talks about the Mark 1 passenger carriage. Obviously this is a British railway, it talks about the whole idea of having a village in amongst your railway which makes it so much more lifelike and believable some fantastic pictures here synopsis of the layout and in the back part of this magazine which is falling apart as you can see because it needs to be in a binder talks about the fantastic steam era and rail history i can't show you too much more of that because it'll be sort of sorts of copyright but there's a great little insight into you know the rise of steam and the demise of steam if that makes any sense nevertheless i actually did quite enjoy this magazine I do like this picture here. It looks like something from a long time ago, but if you go across a bit here, there's some people with cameras there. 
So were you lucky enough to be part of this picture and become world famous? Issue 1 also came with the first section of track mat, which is like a layout. I think this is one quarter of the layout, once I get it fully opened. Well, there it is all folded out. I think that's one quarter of the layout. I hope it is. And on there I can see it's got areas where you put the buildings. The station goes there. There's a road network there. But most importantly, here is a spot where you'll be laying in your track. And if I just took this inside and showed this to my boy, he'd go and get his toy trains and go... Hi there, it's Thomas, and I've come to crash the party. <laughs> well, okay, from issue one, we've taken a look at all of this interesting stuff here, which sort of details what you're getting into. There's a piece of track, and there's a carriage we'll look at next. But before I get into that, up at the news agency, there was a whole bunch of other offers and things that were kicking off at the same time. That one was the first one I saw appear. Must have been the mad season of these collections. Is a taxi collection. Of course, the first issue was the one to get. If I flip it over, you know, there we are, you get all these taxis here, and of course, it ends up ramping up to a higher price a bit later on. Hey, are you into collecting, collecting taxis? I'm not really into taxis myself, maybe someone would like that. The next one I saw, and this is all within weeks of each other, was this fire engine collection. Of course, the first one is a cheap one to get. Oh boy, but I tell you what, some of these fire engines look pretty classy. I'm into fire engines. I certainly am. Some of those more modern ones that get me very excited. And it goes up to what is it? $9.95. I might come in and get issue two. Oh, after looking at the finer print here, it goes issue one, $4.95. Issue two, $9.95. And issue three, which reveals a full price of $14.95 per issue. But I'll tell you what, looking at this collection of fire engines has me really pumped up. That's a problem with me. I start on these things and maybe then you're addicted becomes like a little drug doesn't it collecting these things first one's a bit of an old-fashioned one but the one which I'm definitely gonna collect is this one here I think this looks fantastic it's the Star Trek uh, collection all the starships are 70 in this one 70 issues the first issue was the one to get 399 and it was the next generation Enterprise very classy machine that one I've got a bunch of uh, Star Trek next generation stuff that I collect so that was issue one there and it's interesting, I don't know, some people say, oh, but yeah, you know, it's not worth it. Here's the next one. The next issue was $12.99, and you get that bad puppy in there. I think a bit of an argument of how much die cast in this is versus plastic, which I'm yet to investigate, as you can see. The third one was a bit of a Klingon chip. Oh, yeah. And the price ramps up to its full price of $19.99. That's something very important to see. This one, it started off as a really good deal. And it ramps up to a higher price. And of course, as I told you, I was collecting this, there was issue four. Oh yeah. I say, bring it on and bring it on hard. Okay, we've landed back on Earth. You're probably saying, thank goodness. And what was very funny about this one was I only just got issue one because what was happening was that all the train fans were coming in and buying the masses of issue one that were on the shelves. And we'll probably find out the reason why very shortly. I actually bumped into a lovely person in the shop and he had, he had a few things to say about this, which hopefully educated me. Very, very lucky to pick this up. Because for some people, picking up a carriage for $8 was just too much of a good temptation. Okay, let's come in and talk about this piece of track first. Okay, I'm not exactly sure which company this is derived from. All I can see in the back is Made in China. But the big problem with this track here is and I'll show you by bringing in a magnet and the magnet sticks to this track is that it's steel. Now what this is going to cause is all sorts of confusion and delay as your railway layout gets older. There's some old steel track of mine and you can see what's gone on there and it doesn't take very much at all for this track to get rusty and once you get rust on the track your train starts to become very haphazard in the way it operates. I'm pretty sure anyone who's half serious about doing model railways would not use steel track anymore. It's a bit of a thing from the bygone era. These days, there's nickel silver track, and the way you can identify this sort of track is if you bring a magnet in, the magnet will not stick to it. But if only this layout came with this better type of track, because then I could say, well, maybe, and just maybe, it would have been a nice thing to get into. But don't totally write off all your old steel track. There is actually a nice little purpose for this sort of stuff. If you're looking for a fantastic distressed steel look on an old siding in a model railway, where it looks like it has been disused for many years, you get a great look once that steel track starts to really rust up. And that's what it's good for. 
And you know what, I headed down to my local hobby store and guess what, I found some steel track, but this was given to me for free, because as the local hobby store explained to me, lol, Leo, we don't sell this stuff anymore, even though it's got a price tag on it, we would strongly advise not to ever use steel track. So as far as they were concerned, this sort of stuff is totally redundant. So maybe the best thing to do if you are following this model railway layout is chuck away those pieces of track, go get some decent stuff, and let's look at the carriage next. Well, remembering this is basically an $8 carriage. It's got a coupling system which looks, I don't know, is that Backman? It's not Hornby, I don't think. The audience are going to tell me because the audience are trained fans. I'm not, I'm just a bogus one. It's got a bit of detailing. But what's most important of these sorts of things, or one of the most important things, is the type of wheels that it has. Does it have metal wheels? Now, what is interesting, I brought my little Thomas magnet in here. I can't get the magnet to stick to that. But it is metal because I can show you how I can tell. If I bring in a knife or something and just scratching that wheel there, hopefully you can see that's metal and not plastic. It's looking very metal once I scratch away the black top surface on that. Hopefully you can see that. And to have metal wheels on model railways is actually very important. In model railways, quite often people will scrutinise the finest little details, the rivets and everything. And what I noticed on some of the moulds here, there are blemishes on the moulds and little problems. And it's funny, I only was made aware of this, that the fact that I bumped into a very keen model railway fan uh, in the shop, in the news agency. And he was very nice and he pointed out to me some of the things he thought was wrong with this train. Although he says it's actually a very good deal. Um, I mean, obviously it's not your top end stuff. Your top end stuff is would be like rivet, rivet counters, um, you know, heaven. But if you look along the top here, you can start to see, maybe a bit hard to see through camera, but you can start to see the blemishes in the moulds. And what he detailed to me was that basically moulds get used for a certain period of time, and then they stop. There's one through there. And then you'll find that most probably that this stuff has been generated from old uh, moulds. Maybe the audience will tell me more about this. It's not really something that I am that... Um, what would you call it, knowledgeable about, but I'm sure my audience is, and I'm sure they've got plenty to say about the carriage that I've got in my hands. Well, I've just been scrutinising the bogey and coupling area, which is fairly impressive. There's bits of spring and stuff under there, which makes the thing pop out as you turn. It's a little bit nicer than the Hornby one, but what is a little bit disturbing is that I'm seeing some components on this have already rusted. So maybe in seeing this, it's starting to unravel exactly what we're dealing with. It's interesting on the Mark 1, these little bits of detail underneath have actually been glued on. I've just accidentally snapped one off, which had me looking at how they're attached. It's only been glued on. Bit of a catch for young players. There was a catch for me, and this is like this little piece here. It's quite flimsy. It doesn't take much to break that off at all. Um, I don't know, is that normal? I have to ask my model railway friends, is this normal to happen on this sort of stuff? That box there, I can't get the break off. Seems to be glued on better. Oh, no, I can get that one to go. <laughs> it's becoming a bit of a snap fest. I'd better leave it alone before it's totally in pieces. The nicest thing about this carriage is the fact that it's got metal wheels. It seems to have a pretty good coupling system, although I've got nothing to really couple it to. But the best part is it's got a bit of weight. Uh, I can't stand rolling stock, which has got no weight. It tends to want to fluff off the rails really fast. This thing's got a bit of weight. Let's put it on the scales. So come in and put it up on the scales. What do we have? 171 grams. So there's my very impressive 171 gram $8 railway carriage and it had me go into the hobby store to pick up a Hornby carriage. Hornby there. It's the Railroad series which is the cheapest version I can get. It's not exactly the same sort of carriage. Let's take a look at how much I paid. That's the style of carriage. That's how much it was. You might as well call that five cents off $40. Makes that other one, the $8 one, look like a complete steal. And then you start to understand why the news agency man said there were people coming in and just buying the whole lot out. They probably stuck them all on eBay or they've got these amazing railway sets which have got all the same $8 carriage on them. So let's first off take a look at the wheels. What have we got underneath here? And quite sadly, we've got plastic wheels, which isn't very impressive at all. When I take a look down the side of this nice railway carriage, I do feel the level of detailing is a little bit higher than the one that we looked at before. It's got some details on the side here which are raised up and they're painted yellow. 
Well, under the Hornby carriage, sadly, we haven't got steel wheels, but the detailing underneath here just doesn't snap off as easy as the um, the other carriage. It looks like it's all part of the mould, which is sort of curious to see. I'm hoping that the train fans who watch my channel can explain this a little bit further. Well, I've done a strip down of both of these carriages, the one from the Railway Village series, and the other one, of course, is the Hornby one. And you've got to remember that that there is basically $40 on screen there versus what cost $8. I think I'm starting to see why people went into a frenzy and were buying them all up. The Railway Series 1 was 171 grams. The detailing inside, well, it's there, but it's not high detail. I suppose what you expect on the lower end stuff. It's got an aisle on one side there and, of course, the seats. Interestingly, it had 40 grams of steel as the weight in the carriage. That's what you really need on this sort of stuff or you carriages do become a bit jumpy on the rails over on the Hornby side 127 grams it's a slightly shorter carriage it's got the same you know, I suppose lack of detailing but that's expected in this lower end Hornby stuff probably a little bit more detailing on the chairs a little bit tiny bit more I'd probably give this one a few more marks up on the actual interior detailing but what was very curious was it only had 20 grams of steel as a weight that's actually half the amount of that carriage there so much of the weight difference is actually because of the steel and not the fact that that carriage there is slightly shorter. And in final summary about these carriages, well, I think it's pretty obvious to me and hopefully you out there as well, that that Mark 1 passenger corridor carriage is a steel at $8. Remembering you also get a piece of steel track that you can throw straight in the bin as far as I'm concerned. And I bet you there is a ton of those guys there are going to be up on eBay. I've just got that feeling about it. Ah, oh, there's nothing better than pulling out the old trains and giving them a spin. That train on the rails at the moment is one from my childhood. It's one of the last trains that I that I got before I sort of lost interest in the hobby, which is sort of sad. And I'm thinking right back to, uh, I suppose, the early 80s when I say that. But back, it would have been the mid 70s. That was my first train set. I don't know, I'm thinking 74, 75. Unfortunately, the powered uh, part of that train set doesn't work anymore. That motor is burnt out. But it's one of those ones that had that magnetic traction uh, thing to it. Doesn't work. No, no. This boy's just asking for work. This was an old goods wagon from back in that time. You can tell the old stuff because it says made in England underneath. In fact, all this stuff is made in England, which is interesting. These days, you just don't see that. I did have an Australian uh, Victorian Railways locomotive, and they were the carriages that it pulled around. Uh, which I don't obviously no longer have. There's that one there, which I can't tell you because I'm not a super train buff. But they were basically the trains uh, from when I was a kid. And boy, oh boy, bringing them out brings back some very good memories. It's good fun to play trains. Uh, it's not often I bring out this stuff and have it running. But my boy really loves it. I mean, the main purpose for me building up all this is I want to give uh, my Backman Thomas a run which has got the moving eyes, and I want to see how this uh, carriage goes from that railway series. Remembering that was um, a nice $8 pickup for me. You take it easy when you're driving backwards. Sometimes going backwards can be a little bit tricky. Oh, nice driving. Nice driving indeed. And we're going to go forwards now, by the looks of it. Here we go. Helicopter tracking shot. Look at that. Choo-choo. Off it goes. This crane... Oh, train recovery crash thing was another one from my childhood. From memory, that thing used to always jump the rails. It used to be more of a thing that I sat on the side and looked at. I think from memory, the fact that it had all those wheels in a row uh, didn't help it stay on the rails. Mind you, now when I look at it, I can see that there's a bit of uh, movement you can have on these wheels for the obvious reason that going around radiuses is tough when you have all those wheels on the line. Uh, but I still remember having trouble with it. The other one I remember, which was a bit of a nightmare on the tracks for possibly the same reason, was I just remember this one liked to jump off. Mind you, I always had like carpet trains. You can see it really didn't have a middle wheel. It just had what looked like a, a wheel didn't do anything. But I just remember this train as being one that, um, that liked to be a jumper. Oh, it looks good, doesn't it? Whoa, yeah. Go for it. The trick to shooting this is pull the focus as the train comes closer to you. Hope it worked. Well, that there is my Hornby Thomas the Tank, and it is vastly different to the Backman uh, Thomas the Tank. 
won't start an argument on that one in this, this video. All that stuff there came with one of the train sets. That one at the back there was something I picked up at a local train show. You know, the very comforting thing about hearing this thing run around, and I think that brings back the, um, the greatest memories, is just the sound of the train on the rails. There's a certain sound that makes that, um, it's a bit like a waterfall, I suppose. You can sit there and just listen to it, and it's very comforting. What's that, the train horn? But the best thing is to be the fat controller and control the speed of the train. Make it stop when you want it to stop. Being the boss of this stuff is where it's at. What is very nice is that's a very smooth operator still. You can get some nice slow starts of that train. Remember, it's not a young train at all. It's very old. Off it goes. Oh, yeah. I'm going to try another pull focus with the train shot. They're very hard to pull off sometimes. I think I did it. Whoa. What's sort of a little bit sad about model railways is when you go to model train shows you rarely see obviously younger people like that running the trains I just feel it's a bit of a dying hobby which is sad it's nice that that magazine will be introducing some people into the you know the royal hobby of model trains but there are so many other distractions these days uh, which are train related like there's so many apps which have trains running about my son loves to play with those and I feel that that is really pulling children away from uh, you know the real enjoyment of having model trains and playing with real model railways. Do you like playing the trains on the iPad? Yeah. Which one do you like better, the iPad trains or the real trains? Can you tell me that one? Um, all of them. Very diplomatic again. All of them. Yeah, no one changed you. You want to change? Who do you want to put on next? Um, A lot of choose from there, isn't there? Who are you going to put on? Hi. Okay, well, bring him round and we'll change the choo choo. That's it, bring him in nice and slow and we'll change the choo choos. Well, my son thinks that's Diesel 10 and he set up this express train. This is his first run for some time. Wow, that's going quite well. And there's a distinctive sound that this train had. It brings back a lot of memories, I can tell you. I'll tell you what, this is one high speed train, whoa! Here she comes, wow! Certainly a good speed on that train, you want to slow it down a bit? Yep. Might be a bit dangerous for the passengers getting that speed. Okay, let's count. One, oh, wow. two, three. You're doing it like a real train, that's amazing. That's a better speed I think. To me that looks more realistic, mind you I dare say in real life that train would have been a fairly high speed unit. Well, no, it looks like we've got speed again. Can you slow it down? It's a bit hard to video. It's tearing around this speed. Well, that's a nice slower speed. It's actually running very smoothly. It's not a young engine. And it just sits in a box for, you know, eons doing nothing. I'm actually half impressed. It's got... It seems to be running much better than what I used to remember as a kid. Mind you, I don't think I ever had my track set up really nicely. And always just basically down on some carpet. But that is looking very, very nice indeed. And it's starting to speed up. I'll tell you what, this has completely derailed this video. I'll only be talking about issue one of that thing, but I was going to come around. All I wanted to do was basically set up a track and run that round with Thomas. And I'll get there eventually. But for the time being, uh, my boy is enjoying the trains. Well, of all the trains that are up there on the table, there are actually three that I haven't spoken about yet or detailed why I have them, and they're actually the, some of the most recent purchases in a sense. And that's those three down on screen there, and these are purchased to push along basically trains that had no motor in another video, which we're not going to get into the details of now. Um, I think that's classed as a 44 tonner. They're all black because I needed them to be hiding behind other trains, and hopefully you wouldn't have noticed this thing was actually pushing along. In fact, they were seen on screen and um, no one saw them, so maybe my little trick worked. I uh, bought two of those from a second-hand train dealer and also I purchased this one here. That was the first one I purchased but I didn't like it. I couldn't get any nice low-end speed from this one. It's a Backman model. I like these two because they did some nice low-end speeds for me. What was also curious about these was they actually had two motors in them. There was a motor on that bogey there and a motor on that bogey there. And I did have a dreaming plan of pulling those bogeys out to power other trains. 
Can you stop this train and we'll put the purpose of this video on because it is totally derailed now. Sorry about this, but we've got into train media mode. Remember before I was talking about the nice weight in this carriage here? Well, it's funny, I just picked up one of these, I thought it felt like a bit of a feather. Put it up on the scales, let's see how much it weighs. 86 grams, it's a lightweight. Just trying to get my head around the coupling on this carriage here. Well, I know Thomas there is a Buckman and so is the train next to him. And there's the coupler on that train. It looks a little bit different. Who out there has trouble getting trains on the track? How's that? Yeah, I think you got... How's it going there? Having a bit of trouble? My old trick was you put your hand down. Oh, no, you got that one there. You probably got a trick better than Daddy. It's on. Well, well done. You've done better than me. And it's coupled up to Thomas. Okay, chocks away. I'm finally getting to the purpose of why I put the track out. There she goes, and it looks rather fine. Thomas looks great with that um, nice, cheap $8 carriage I've got. And it sounds like a really smooth runner too. Try and do a focus here if Thomas is a bit slower. Oh, I might have pulled it off. Just make sure he is going 100%. That's full power. But I'll tell you what, he's not very sprightly compared to that other diesel we had going. Mind you, he is pulling... A fairly weighty carriage there and that's always gonna have an effect on your full speed so who out there is going to admit to running off to the news agency and buying many many magazines to get the $8 mark 1 carriage I struggle to get just this one but I'm sure there are people out there who have got many of them Well, we have talked a lot of trains in this video. We've tried to make comparisons and try to get our heads around prices. Remembering, if you're going to go and follow your model railway village, you're up for a total investment of, what, $2,386.80? And that doesn't include the controller nor the little engine that you need to pull your trains around. You know, I recently went to my model shop and I noticed a train set like this. I paid $600 for it and I bargained down the price. That's what's good about going to shops. You can negotiate with people, you can say, hey listen, would you take this as an offer? And the person accepted the $600. I think $600 is excellent value for this. I have not investigated it yet. If I go down here, this is what you get inside the set there. All that boogie down the bottom there is what you get. There's a really interesting layout as well. It's a double loop with a shunting area. And that is a great little layout if you're starting off. That's really um, going for it. This Hornby train set is a digital train set. You can control the trains with your PC. I haven't worked out yet if it will work with my Apple computers. I'm pretty sure that set there is the future of uh, model railways. It's digital. It uses the right sort of track. It's a very interesting layout. And I think $600 is a fantastic price for that amount of train boogie. And over taking a look at the Your Model Railway Village, I'm sort of thinking, what do you get for your money there? Well, you're not getting digital, you're getting track that is going to be problematic and you basically need to exchange for the better style of track. Um, I suppose you're getting a bit of information in the magazine on how to do detailing, but it's that price tag that worries me. And that price tag is not indicative of the full price. I'll investigate issue 2 and 3 and the model building that it does, and so it looks like a little railway station. The roof of the building is an issue three there, plus you get the track, which you can just throw away. Um, but you're sort of thinking, well, that's $40 basically for a building and what would be three pieces of track. When, if you get into the local hobby store, I wonder what that sort of money buys you down there. That's the big question. But hey, I tell you what, you can't go past that $8 carriage. It's one of the best buys I've ever had in my life. Look, it always is very interesting when you start to analyse what you get for your money. I wonder who's getting into this. If you're one of my viewers and you are doing that uh, model railway series there, I'd love you to tell me if you are. Um, and also up here, up the other end here, if I uh, hidden behind here, is this digital railway. If you've got one of those, I wouldn't mind having a chat to you because uh, I'm not that familiar with how these are uh, set up. And if they're easy, because I'm going to try and get into that as if I'm a complete novice, well, which I am when it comes to digital railways. Well, I can assure you this video got totally derailed. It is nice, we've got the trains out and my son's enjoying them. 
He normally has toy trains, but this is the real McCoy as far as I'm concerned. And it's thanks for watching and... Bye for now. Thank you very much. Dad? Yes? Can I take a digital train inside? You want the digital train inside? Really? Can you let Daddy look at it first? Yes or no? Oh, come on, Dad, please.